Hey everyone, I hope you had a good holiday season and a happy new year. Now, I know I'm a bit late on that one by a couple of weeks now, but I got pretty caught up in the beginning of the year and I just didn't have the time to come in here and work on anything, let alone make any videos. But I'm back now and I can't wait to get started on the year, if not a little late. Now, in my absence, I put a lot of thought into what I wanted to get accomplished this year. I made a plan of action and got all of my thoughts and goals down on paper, and it's shaping up to be a pretty ambitious year. I've already got some pretty big projects planned and some of them already started and in the pipeline. Uh, we'll just have to see how they go and if I can take them to completion because they are they are pretty big. But before we get to all of that, sometimes before moving forward it can be fun to look back. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to make a video just kind of documenting all of my personal work that I created in 2022. Now it's not a whole lot. My personal paintings definitely took a hit last year and I didn't get nearly as much done as I would have preferred, but still I did manage to create a decent amount of stuff. With that being said, let's get started. So starting off the year, I was just coming off of a project where I was finishing up 50 landscape paintings that had uh, sci-fi and creature elements to each, kind of painted like Bob Ross. A lot of them were based off of older paintings of mine, some of them were just reused, but for the most part I created around 50 original pieces on top of what I already had. So I was pretty much out of the mindset of, of wanting to do more landscapes, and it was all just feeling really repetitive and like I wasn't going anywhere with it. So I wanted to start the year really pushing myself with characters. So I made this piece. Uh, this piece is inspired very heavily by um, Frank Frazetta and Craig Mullins. With Frazetta, I love his compositions and how everything has like a, a wash and a glaze look to it. And Craig Mullins, I mean, the man's a legend. I love his rendering style. I love how a lot of his work looks very messy and chaotic, but then when you zoom out or look at the whole picture, you couldn't even tell that it was uh, hand painted, uh, something that I really strive to achieve in my work one day. And so this painting started what would actually turn out to be the theme for the year, uh, me trying to mimic uh, that kind of Craig Mullins uh, art style, at least in the sense of very visible brush strokes that when you look up close might not look like much of anything, but when you see the whole picture, you couldn't even tell that it was hand painted. Also, being very inspired by Marco Bucci, I wanted to work on my shape design, my colors, and most importantly, my hard and soft edge control, because I feel I haven't been paying enough attention to that. So I wanted to make more of a conscious effort to really strategically place those things. And so this painting was my first attempt at really hitting that list, just going down the list and really, really focusing on improvement. This painting probably took me 15 to 20 hours. I unfortunately didn't record this one. Actually, I didn't record anything from this year until I started YouTube, which looking back was a bit of a mistake. Like this one, I would have liked to have the time lapse of, but man, what can you do? Moving forward, I'll, I'll be recording everything. But you know, besides that, uh, this piece was from Imagination, uh, which was another thing I wanted to focus on. I think the only reference that I used was for the centipede because I didn't know what their, what their head looked like. But besides that, I'm really proud of this piece. Uh, it's probably my favorite painting that I've ever made. I think it's the best one that I've ever made even, even now. Um, so I got to strive to to do this again, really. Also this year, I gave a lot of love to the round brush. Uh, this painting was made only with the round brush except for the background. The background was just some custom brush that I made a long time ago and I always use. Uh, everything else was just solid round. Of course, I played with the opacity and the, the, the hardness of the edge and my, my tablet is of course touch sensitive, but besides that, just hard round. But overall, really good piece, my personal favorite of mine, and I really gotta follow it up. It was a great start to the year. So these ones have a little bit of a backstory. Uh, before I got into art, I always wanted to make like games and stuff, and so I was learning how to code like a decade ago, and I was playing in um, like early, early versions of Unity and Game Maker and stuff like that, and I used to make assets for uh, the games, the prototypes that I was working on. And this is actually a redesign of some of the first that I ever did. The funny thing is, uh, coding never came naturally to me. It took me a long time to wrap my head around a lot of it. And just as I was starting to get somewhere with it and learn how to actually put it into action and make some stuff, uh, I decided to get a tablet so I could make my own art because art was very expensive and I had no means to pay for it. And it was in making the art for the games that I realized that I'd rather be making art than 
than coding. And so that's what that's where the switch came. I completely dropped coding and um, started creating art. But these are actually recreations of some of the very first game character ideas that I was coming up with for a side-scrolling Mega Man style game. And you can clearly see that this guy is basically just based off Mega Man. He's just Mega Man. But still, I always kind of liked these characters and was proud of what I was able to do so long ago before I had any idea what the hell I was doing with the uh, drawing. And so I thought it'd be fun to revisit these characters and kind of reimagine and redraw them and create a series of them, kind of like I was talking about uh, in the beginning with the environment paintings that I did. I was planning to do this as well. And basically it fell through. Right after I finished making those 50 paintings that I was talking about in the beginning of the video, I got to work on making this one because the, the year had just rolled over and I wanted to, to start making another series for the platform. Uh, it's a trade. It was. It's a digital trading card platform called Neon Mob, and I thought that it would be a really fun thing to just keep making series for the website, and you make a little small amount of money with it. But after releasing the previous series, I kind of realized how poorly ran the website is, and how it seemingly only has one person handling everything. So I pulled the idea, and I kind of scrapped the project altogether because I didn't want to create anything else for that website. But besides that, you know, I, I still like how they look. I think they look pretty cool. Uh, I could still use them for something if I want. They have a very clean, cartoony, almost vector style. Uh, I could easily still use these in a game if I so choose. So it, it was, it wasn't wasted effort. I think they would have made some pretty cool digital trading cards, but you know what? Sometimes you gotta just go with your gut and pull out of something. And all signs were pointing to, to this not being worth uh, following through with. So that's what I did, I pulled out. This one's probably the, the best and most original of them. Cute little sidekick character. And here was just a little splash image uh, just to pitch the idea to, to the users. But hey, either way, you know, I still think they look pretty good. They're cute little robots. I could definitely see returning to them yet again and expanding upon them, making a whole bunch of different variants and all kinds of new enemies and stuff. And maybe I'll still make a game one day on them. But for now, it was just fun to return to some, what, eight-year-old artwork and redraw it. That's always fun to do. So after deciding that I wasn't going to make the robot uh, trading card series, I decided that I wanted to just focus my efforts on improving myself as an artist. I realized that I hadn't really been doing studies for a good while since I had been caught up the previous several months finishing other projects that I would start working on my drawing and sketching skills. So I tackled a whole bunch of different subjects. I had a whole bunch of sheets of it. I'm only going to show a few of them here. This is a sheet of uh, just a bunch of bad tree sketches. I don't know what it is, but when I draw trees, I just, I can't do it. They come out so bad. Um, I was just using like a one point like a one or two point um, like ballpoint brush basically that I just made really quick. Uh, I know the red ink looks a little strange, but I like sketching in red. So just, I don't know, deal with it, I guess. Uh, but yeah, these are just really quick and loose. I was trying to just capture some form. Um, I originally wasn't going to do any value on top of it, but after I did them, I figured what the hell, I might as well do like a quick value wa uh, wash over everything. And yeah, honestly, these are... Uh, uh, what you'd call not good, <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, good practice. Uh, this was one of the first sheets that I did. Uh, actually, it was probably the third, but trees were, trees and plants were the first things that I started with because I know I struggle with them. But at the same time, they're kind of an easy thing to sketch because, I mean, you can't really, you can't really go wrong. Like, this might not be a great drawing of a tree, but it's a tree, you know what I mean? <laughs> So, but it is what it is. It was good warm up dexterity practice. Moving further along with the nature theme, I started uh, to draw like a bunch of rocks and stuff. And these were just like quite literally Googled cool or most iconic rock formations. And so the, you know, a lot of these are probably very recognizable. Uh, these I think came out pretty good. This was, again, this was already after I had done a few other pages worth of uh, of other sketches so I was already kind of getting warmed up and in the zone and in the flow all these sketches were probably done over uh, probably just a couple of weeks all these uh, studies sketch studies but yeah you know some of these look uh, pretty nice pretty good 
again. I probably should have just stuck with uh, sketching them, just leaving them as line work. But I am a sucker for rendering things, which is funny. I never used to like the painting process that much, but you know, now I do. But again, this is just a quick wash. No reason to fully render. Although a couple of these are actually pretty tight. I could have, like this one's pretty good. I could have probably just painted that one all the way through. This one was definitely overly uh, complicated. I don't think I needed to draw every single line like I did, but hey, good practice, good practice. And yeah, overall a successful sheet. So after filling a bunch of pages of nature stuff, uh, foliage and uh, trees and rocks and stuff like that, uh, I was going to do animals, but then I, I forget why I decided that I would practice uh, working on a little bit more perspective kind of stuff. And so for some reason, I landed on vintage power tools to start with. And the interesting thing with these is I actually uh, worked with silhouettes first on these. So I didn't lay down a sketch. Um, and even though I was focusing on trying to get good perspective in these, it was all eyeballed. I didn't draw any any perspective lines or grids, as you can clearly see. But yeah, I had just spent several days working on my sketching and line work with the nature stuff, getting a little monotonous. So I thought I'd mix it up by focusing on silhouette first, trying to train my brain to read silhouettes better. Pretty fun exercise. So all of these actually started as just a really light marker wash, and then I would draw on top of it. And the fun thing about these tools is none of these images are actually direct copies. Um, all of the images that I referenced for these were in a different position entirely. Most of them were just like dead on looking at them from a profile view. And I really tried to exercise my brain and push uh, eyeballed perspective, kind of imagining what the tool would look like if I rotated it in space. So these were really good exercises. Um, some are, some I think are quite good. Obviously, there's some wonky perspective going on here because, again, it was just eyeballed. Probably should have done some actual perspective lines, but since I was starting with the silhouette and all that, I just kind of wanted to start drawing on top of it. But overall, really fun exercise. I think that this is a pretty successful sheet. So after doing the vintage power tools, I thought that I would push the focus a little bit more on perspective and do some modern tools. Um, now, I'm, I'm still not doing proper, proper perspective. I'm not actually making the full grid and finding my VPs and everything. Uh, but this time I did at least use some guides and I sketched things out first. So they, they're a bit more accurate. Still a little wonkiness here and there, but they're definitely more accurate. I actually did more than this and I don't know where the, I don't know where they went. I don't know if I deleted them or if I just can't find them buried in one of the hundreds of Photoshop files that I have. Sometimes that happens, you forget to save it. It might just be a random layer in some in some file that doesn't match. I don't know, but nonetheless, this is a pretty successful page as well. I think I I really like how these came out for the most part. All that's left to do is to stop just eyeballing perspective and shying away from doing it the, the legit way so I can learn it better. So this is a pretty fun one. This is just like a design sheet uh, for a character that I've been kind of uh, bouncing around in my head and working on. Um, I have a bunch on this character. This is just one of the passes that I've done. He's basically just a painter in like a Victorian kind of uh, Lovecraftian hell, where he's just kind of traveling the lands and painting all the Lovecraftian monstrosities that he sees. Thought that'd be a fun little series for paintings. So I was just kind of working out uh, some design ideas and you know, his backpack, the kind of gear he'd need. Got his paint box here that you can't even remove the paint brushes from because they're just, they're just stuck in a block that's underneath the lip there. Um, and yeah, just kind of imagining what his pack would look like, different variants. Hopefully I finally get around to throwing him into some paintings so he can star in his own series of paintings. Really he's attached to a bigger IP that I've been working on for quite some time now that uh, I don't even know what I'm doing with anymore, to be honest. I guess it's just one of those things that I'll have to sit down and figure out. And coming up I have a few pages of some mech designs that I was working on, just testing my industrial design skills. Uh, it's not something that I really do very often. I've never really been uh, big on mechs. I mean, I like them. I just don't really draw them that often. So I thought it'd be really fun to start a project with a whole bunch of different mech designs. The project kind of fell through, but still got some cool designs out of it. Some good, some good uh, mech practice. I actually think that uh, the drawings were a mixture of Photoshop and Procreate. 
if I remember correctly. Uh, I remember I did this one mostly in Procreate. I kind of go back and forth. I prefer working in Photoshop on my Cintiq, uh, but I do have an iPad and I do try to use it. Uh, but I don't know. I don't really care for Procreate that much, if I'm being honest. And the Apple Pencil, while it's really good for some things, I don't like how it feels for uh, painting. I think it's amazing for drawing and sketching, but I, I don't know. I can't, no matter how much I use it, it just doesn't feel doesn't feel good to use to paint. I know there's a bunch of people that make it work, so if you're one of them, that's that's great, fantastic. But yeah, I mean, uh, I prefer my Wacom. And this one's probably my favorite of the bunch, this guy right here. My thought process with all of these robots was kind of like um, utility suits that someone would be using to perform a job, and then they maybe got turned into a battle bot, or they were just being used for battle, kind of like uh, uh, Ripley in uh, the power loader in Aliens. That was my constant reminder of what I was aiming for. So yeah, this one could just be like a, a loader or something. Almost kind of like an SCV from StarCraft now that I now that I really look at this guy. This one kind of looks like a, a miner. And this one's the most uh, animalistic of them, which was another idea that I was going for. Like this one up here, the sketch up here looks like a, a bit like an ape gorilla but yeah overall this is a pretty fun project uh it fell through i'm not going to be going forward with any of with any of these for anything but still a uh, really good practice it was fun to get done i really got to work on some more industrial design stuff work on my my mech design maybe one day i'll return to them and make them even better so really quick this one was just a scene of a bunch of uh, animals that uh, i had photos of from when me and my wife went to the zoo a couple years back and I was placing them in like an African watering hole type setting. Uh, I was planning on painting it traditionally. So I was just getting to composition and a very rough and loose light, light source figured out. Uh, there's still clearly some work that needed to be done, especially with uh, some of the scale here is off. But the composition was mostly figured out and I just didn't go through with it. I'll probably still return to this though because I do want to do this. It just needs one more pass or two before I commit to putting paint on canvas. So now we're back to the beginning of the year where I wanted to focus on laying uh, shapes on top of other simple shapes to make it look way more detailed than it actually is. And uh, working from imagination as well, I was really hell-bent on getting better at that after doing all those studies especially. So once again, I'm looking at artists like Craig Mullins and uh, Frank Frazetta. Not as heavily for this, but they're always in the back of my mind when I'm thinking about how I'm gonna lay things out and also Marco Bucci and how he's always talking about the edge control. I mean, not just him, it's obviously very important, but uh, I had just gotten done watching uh, through all of his videos again, because they're very good to go back and touch up on. And I was inspired to create something like this. Uh, the idea was just a woman emerging from a flower, like blooming from a flower that maybe only blooms at night uh, in front of the moon. This was basically a speed painting. Uh, I think I spent three hours on it, so just on the verge of not really being a speed paint. I don't know, I guess, it, I guess it depends on what you consider a speed paint. To me, anything under four kind of feels like a speed painting, but uh, three to four is definitely pushing it, obviously. But again, the same thing applies if you really like start to zoom in, especially in the background. It's really just like nothing. Just a bunch of random strokes going on. Almost abstract. The flower came out pretty good. This was mostly the round brush. Uh, I did use my custom texture brush that I tend to use often. I made it so many years ago, I should probably make a new one, update it. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, this was all the round brush. Again, just really playing with hard and soft edges, really trying to figure out, trying to, trying to crack the code of how do you lay um, abstract, shapes over each other and make them look good. Where should sharp and, and soft edges go? Um, it's just a process. But yeah, fun little imaginative piece. So after I finished the moonflower piece, I thought that I should stop working from imagination and instead uh, focus a little bit on doing direct studies. And I could have just done master studies. I've done that many times. I have one hanging in my room now. But I thought it would be fun to do some studies of some uh, movies. So once again, I'm taking the same principles that I've been talking about, shapes on top of shapes, hard and soft edges. Uh, this time, 
taking an even bigger page out of Marco Bucci's book. He has so much fun with a, a shitload of textures that I kind of wanted to play with that as well. So these are all a whole bunch of uh, like traditional style of more painterly type brushes that I used. And I just went, went crazy. This one's got kind of an odd resolution because I started in Procreate. I forget what, what setting I chose. I think it was what, what Procreate deems 4K, which looks more like um, letterboxed 4K. But I really focused on getting a lot of textures down, um, really chaotic brush strokes, really visible brush strokes. Uh, I wanted everything to really look like a brush stroke until you looked at the whole image and saw that it was actually like a painting. Um, and yeah, that's you'll see that that's basically my motto for everything going forward. See, when you zoom in here, you could see that it, I almost didn't even finish coloring in the, the silhouette of the Rex. Kind of just implied a lot of it, implying some light and shadows. So like I said, I did start it in Procreate. I think I did the majority of it in Procreate and I finished it off in Photoshop. I also started to dabble with the mixer brush in Photoshop, which I basically never use because I don't know how to use it, frankly. Uh, I can never get really good results with it, but I've seen artists do amazing things, so I wanted to play with it more. Um, since I didn't start this in Photoshop, I didn't get a chance to use it a whole lot, but when I did transfer it over to Photoshop, uh, I started to use it uh, pretty heavily. I think I mostly use it in the background here, kind of getting the, the murky fogginess of the rain going on, that, getting that grain everywhere. But in the, the next couple, I used the mixer brush more. So here's another great scene that was uh, requested by one of my friends. Um, this one was made entirely in Photoshop and I used a lot of the same, it's the same brush set. Uh, I used a lot of the mixer brush in this one and I really like how this one came out. I think that this one was very successful. I achieved everything that I set out to do. Um, there's a lot of texture going on. I got very strong uh, silhouettes and shapes, very visible shapes, very visible brush strokes. Uh, I think I could have played with hard and soft edges a bit more. I, I feel I maybe overworked it a little bit in some areas. But overall, especially when I look at the Rex, I'm really pleased with how chaotic everything is and how abstract he looks up close. And then, you, you know, you zoom out and he looks pretty good. This one and the previous one are also under two hours. I'm trying to get these done in... in in an hour, uh, I think I actually did an hour and a half on this top one. And on this bottom one, I think I spent two hours. But I do think I overworked this one a little bit. I probably should have stopped at an hour or an hour and a half. I, I just like working fast. Uh, I, I'm not opposed to sitting down and spending 20, 40 hours on a piece. I've certainly done it. That piece at the start of the year was like 15, 20 hours, no problem. I have one coming up that's also um, in the 10 hour range. Uh, but I, I like working fast because I, I know it's a requirement, basically, and I'm just pretty damn impatient, so I like to get things done as fast as I can. Plus, the beginning of a painting is the funnest part. Uh, when you really get down to, like, just rendering stuff out perfectly and blending, that's when I start to get bored. So the sooner I can just get the idea out um, and capture everything, you know, the better for me which is probably why I'm so attracted to uh, Craig Mullins' style. I know he does some very rendered and highly detailed work, but my favorite works of his are the ones that look more like just uh, sketches. I think they're amazing, and I really strive to capture that in my work, and I, I'm a big proponent of failing a lot and fast, so I do a lot of speed paintings and speed studies and just banging stuff out, just hammering through it, trying to trying to get every drop of knowledge I can out of everything. But with all that being said, you still gotta do long form studies and I'm certainly not opposed to that either. Uh, just throwing out there why I do so many speed paints. These next two were actually requested from the same friend. Uh, I believe this is from A Few Dollars More, a Clint Eastwood movie. This is probably the most ambitious of all of the uh, film studies that I did. Cause you know, in true Western fashion, you got the big uh, 35 mil landscape wide shot and there's just so much detail. There's no way I was going to be able to capture this in a decent amount of time. Uh, I definitely stretched this one. This one was two hours and I, I forced myself to stop because I knew that th this one I could have easily spent several hours on. 
but I really, again, wanted to capture the important details first, which was obviously him and the horse. And, uh, yeah, just kind of imply everything else. Uh, the thing with this one, I definitely have some proportional issues going on with him and the horse. Uh, but, you know, overall, I kind of like some of the color choices. I think that if I wasn't so rushed, I could have done a much better job. But that's part of the exercise. If this was like a commission or something, I obviously would have sat down and done it proper. But for the exercises that I'm setting out to do, I set myself a strict time limit and I had to get it done in that time limit. And this is what I got. And you know, that being said, I think it came out pretty good. And this is from the same movie, a uh, really good one. I really like how this one came out. It's a really good scene in the first place, but uh, it's much simpler than, the, than all the previous ones actually. And so I was able to finish it in an hour. I probably went a little over. This was probably like an hour 15. But I really like how well this one reads, especially zoomed out. Like this this part of the painting reads very well. And then the colors and everything on, on the other side, the buildings and little splashes of light, I think really sell the image. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a great scene in the, in the movie, which is why doing uh, photo studies for movies is so great anyways. Because every scene in a movie is planned like a painting anyways. It's already been thought out by dozens, if not hundreds of people to get everything perfect and beautiful. So if you're gonna do a study, you might as well do one that's already been figured out for you. And that's a big reason why I even did all these in the first place, like I said. I was taking all of the previous checklist of boxes that I had, and I was applying them to studies, that way I could try to decipher how to make my paintings look closer to what I'm trying to make them look like. And again, you can see that same design philosophy where I'm just doing a lot of abstract strokes and layering different uh, um, softness and hardness on top of each other. Just trying to crack the code, just trying to figure it out. But yeah, I really like how this one came out. Very successful. So having just finished a bunch of movie studies, I went back to working from imagination and just whipping some stuff up. This is yet another uh, speed painting that went a little over, little over schedule. Uh, I think this one I did spend about four hours on. It started in Procreate, which I got to stop doing for these. And I actually did stop doing after this because I feel it slows me down a lot. I think if I had done this all in uh, Photoshop, I probably could have got it done in two hours, maybe three hours. Uh, also maybe overworked this one a little bit. Um, but as you can see, I was really playing with the texture again, since I had been playing with that in the previous studies. Uh, hardly any hard round was used in this one. This is all just texture, texture, texture. Uh, just pushing, really pushing it. I think that I could have gone a little higher on the contrast and maybe established the light source a bit better, especially with the campfire. But, you know, overall, I really like this piece. Um, it's around this time that I'm starting to really get into creating for fun, something I talked about in my last video. Just sitting down and saying the hell with it, like, I don't care what the outcome is, I don't care if nobody likes it, I don't care if even I don't like it. Like I've been studying for close to a decade now. Why am I not just making stuff? Uh, Cause it's an easy trap to fall into where you just do study and you study and you study and then you forget to create all the stuff that you sought out to create before you started studying. It's a trap that I see every artist fall into seemingly. I constantly read about it in art communities. So um, it feels good to finally be getting over that, that hurdle. And I think that this piece, as well as a couple of others, really solidified that for me, where I'm officially over that hurdle. At least for now, it'll probably it'll probably pop up at some point and then I'll have to come back to my own videos and listen to myself ramble on about how stupid it is to have those feelings. But either way, I really liked this painting. I kept it really earthy on purpose because I don't really work with a lot of earth tones. So I was really uh, playing with that. Um, yeah, I don't really have much more to say about it other than I like it. And now we come to the second biggest painting that I did in the whole year. Next to the one that I showed in the beginning, this was the longest uh, that I spent on any painting in the year. Uh, I actually started this one intending to, to do a big photo bash. And I was gonna initially do a whole bunch of bashing and see where it ended up. But at the end of the day, uh, I liked what I was doing and I got really into it. I got really into the painting. So I ended up just painting the majority of this thing. 
there's still some remnants of, a, of photos, like there's some tank treads here that I just painted over. There's some scaffolding here on the left that I just laid on its side. We got some scaffolding up at the top. And then this background has a bit of a photo texture going on, but that's really it. Everything else is just hand painted. Um, this is the return of mostly using just a round brush. You can really see, especially like back here, as things get softer and more distant, that it really is just a whole bunch of round on round. Um, again, I heavily, heavily thought about laying um, shapes on top of each other, playing with edge control, really paying attention to where the focus should be. Um, I fought the urge to really render out this uh, giant kai, uh, not a kaiju, this giant Jaeger thing in the background. I had just seen uh, Pacific Rim again, that's what it was. And I was inspired by the, uh, the giant mech action. So I wanted to make like a quick little gypsy danger ripoff where they're kind of either, either dismantling or assembling a big Jaeger in the background. But yeah, I'm pretty proud that I didn't uh, render this thing out because I, I was thinking about it, but I thought that it would take away from the piece, so I stopped. But nonetheless, I think I spent around 10 hours on this one. And I think it's pretty successful. One of my favorite pieces of the year for sure. It's up there with some of the some of my best work I've made, I think. It's not perfect by any means. Could definitely use some more work. These copy-pasted army dudes could could be better since they're in the foreground. But sometimes, you know, you just gotta call it quits at a certain time. And I felt like I had pushed this one as far as I wanted to. It was already way further than I was initially intending. Uh, I suppose I could have really, really pushed it, uh, rendered out these guys and the, the, the mech in the background. But for what it is, I really like it. I think that I'm zeroing in on that style that I'm looking for. Uh, haven't gotten there yet. I probably still won't throughout this year, but we're getting closer and I'm very happy. Uh, so this series of paintings is the culmination of absolutely everything I've been talking about, right? These are all speed paints. These are all about an hour. Um, I think the only one that went over is this green guy. I think he was two hours because he has a lot more detail or an hour and a half, something like that. They're all definitely under two. The, the, I was really focusing on speed on these and I wanted to return to doing characters. And I thought a cool little kind of series of paintings would be doing one character representing each color. And you're probably saying you forgot one, you forgot orange. And yeah, I, I did forget orange. I never got around to it. I think I kind of forgot about these. I should probably go back and do orange. But uh, overall, I really like each one of these. I tried to get a little bit of a color in the character design, like red being a little bit more mechanical and aggressive, blue a little bit more uh, like subdued. Yellow is kind of like in between kind of like a uh, cyberpunk seductress kind of thing. Don't know if she's going to kill you or not. Purple's kind of ethereal. And then green, I just went with like really bright, aggressive green. I, I don't really use green that much, especially this shade of, of green, this vibrancy. And so I really wanted to go with like super aggressively green. And uh, yeah, I like how these all came out. This one, again, I started this one in Procreate, which was a mistake. This is actually the weakest one. I think I, I, I remember wanting to redo this one and I just, as I said, I didn't get around to it. I was playing with framing um, everything in in very uh, dirty and quick strokes in the background, kind of Frazetta-ish, I guess, and yeah, not really. <laughs> but uh, you know, you don't have the time to do like a really thought out background. So I was just getting some, something down. And uh, again, you could see just laying laying shapes on top of shapes, which I know is what painting is anyways, and saying that over and over is probably uh, redundant and, and annoying, but it's it can be easy to, to just render and render and render and just blend to your heart's content for like 30 hours, just rendering like one, one strap or sphere. And I really, really want to just capture like like what Craig Mullins does, man. That that dude is ridiculous. He puts down a couple of breaststrokes and it's, you know, a full character or, or a city or something. But the man's been been making digital art since, I mean, he's been an artist forever, obviously, but the man's been making digital art since like day one. So he's cracked the code and I'm just trying to 
I'm just trying to figure it out. But yeah, I think a lot of these have some very successful elements to them. I really like how the silhouette is very, like basically not even finished. And then the overlaid strokes all uh, represent armor or, you know, tech, what, what, whatever. This guy's got some pretty short shins. But yeah, you know, you zoom out and looks he looks armored. This one's really good. Like I said, like a cyberpunk kind of seductress. You don't know if she's good or evil. Some, something bad's probably going to happen. Got some weird funky stuff coming out of her arm. But then you zoom in and it's all just very, very, very loose. Hard and soft edges. The green dude, I just really wanted to push a uh, layered type of armor. I think I was thinking about Dead Space. How the Dead Space armor, Isaac has a lot of like plates. The plates are, they like scatter upon him. I don't know how to say it. They're all, they're all individual. They don't, they don't look like your traditional armor. So I was definitely thinking about that uh, when I made this dude. And then this one's probably, probably my favorite one. I really like, I really like yellow, but this one, I like the ethereal kind of floating there. The big ring halo thing behind her is really cool. So she's almost like a ghost. Maybe, maybe like energy or plasma or something that's that's contained within a suit or armor, or maybe just energy, electricity or something. I don't know. This stuff's fun to think about while you're drawing it. Just coming up with random head cannon. Uh, yeah. So it's a nice little set of paintings. I really should have made orange to finish it off, but I guess orange doesn't exist. Sorry, red and yellow. So this guy was painted uh, around the same time that I was painting the previous uh, series of paintings. This one was going on at, at the same time, actually, and I was just kind of bouncing between them. This one was meant to be a longer form painting while the other ones were just, like I said, quick speed paints. I think I probably spent, man, this one I think I, I might have spent like 15 hours on, even though I don't think it shows. Uh, mostly because I, I painted over it several times. Uh, I couldn't get this one how I wanted it. I kept going back and forth. Even now, I'm still not fully satisfied with it. This one's kind of a part of the same series as the, uh, the painter that I showed earlier. Uh, it's that same universe, kind of gothic, Victorian. This guy is like some religious leader that the, that the city's looking up to. Maybe he's communing with something or someone. Again, we got the moon. I love painting the moon, especially uh, Blood Moon. Super awesome stuff. Um, and yeah, like I said, I painted over this one several times when I zoom in here. You can see uh, I was really playing with the mixer brush on this one. This was very, very mixer brush. Just trying to figure out how I can utilize the mixer brush more. While once again, maintaining the same principles I've been saying over and over. Shapes on shapes, hard on soft. Some of it's pretty uh, successful too. I really like how some of this architecture came out. Could have done better on the guy. I spent a lot of time just noodling around on this one. Uh, there was a lot of aimless rendering that I did here and it just at the end painted over anyways. But nonetheless, overall, I do like this one. It's just, I don't think that I achieved as much as I should have in the time I spent on this one. But still, nonetheless, I do think it is a success and it did achieve what I set out to learn from it. So in the end, that's all that matters. Here we have a bunch of thumbnails for a landscape, uh, traditional painting that I'm going to be doing. Um, haven't gotten to starting it yet. Uh, I actually would like to make a few of these into paintings or at least reiterate some of them and see how, see where I end up. But frankly, I like a bunch of these. Um, and I would love to make them into paintings. I'm sure you'll be seeing that on the channel, uh, hopefully shortly. But yeah, these these things are really fun to do. Just make a bunch of thumbnails. Uh, this is pretty much how you should start every painting or every design. Start with a thumbnail. You know, these are really quick. Each one of these is like, uh, I, I probably spent like under a few minutes sketching them out and then just you throw like another 10, 20 minutes on top, just throwing in some values, uh, maybe some colors if you want and you, you iterate and iterate and iterate until you get something that's really uh, good, pleasing to the eye, and it's low effort, low um, stress, 
and you just repeat this process over and over again until you're 100% satisfied and then you work on the real painting. Saved yourself a whole lot of heartache. But yeah, I do like a lot of these and I'm sure we'll be getting to painting these on the channel pretty soon. All right, so I have a lot here. I'm not gonna zoom in on all of this, there's a lot. Uh, but I'm getting back into feeling like I'm kind of spinning my wheels and not improving. And I also haven't touched a uh, pencil in a long time. I haven't used graphite, haven't used charcoal, haven't done any traditional work at all at this point, really, especially with uh, sketching in pencil. I, I hardly ever do it. So that was bothering me, and I couldn't help but shake the feeling that if I just focused a bit more on traditional, I'd probably be improving faster. So I decided that I'd get a big sketch pad that I've had lying around for a while and just fill it with a bunch of gesture or figure drawings. I ended up doing a bunch of figures more than gestures, but nonetheless. So the majority of these uh, started off from three to five minutes and I just went straight into it without watching any uh, uh, like guides or tutorials or anything like that. I've obviously done figure, gesture, all that kind of drawing in the past. Uh, it's just been a long time since I've done it, so I didn't want to jump into doing a refresher first. I kind of wanted to just jump straight into it and do it my way for a bit. So these first uh, several pages, I don't know, a couple dozen or two dozen or however many this is, was just me working from just internally, just from myself, from what I remembered. I'm pretty sure these aren't in the order that I did them in, because I kind of just took pictures really quick and compiled them. After I filled a whole bunch of pages, I uh, watched um, Proko's gesture drawing video because I, I had that from several, several years ago. So I rewatched it and I followed along with him. You can see I wrote Proko at the bottom of the ones that I was following along with the video. These are just two minute gestures. And after doing the gesture video, I definitely saw that I was um, overcomplicating some things and could definitely simplify some of the shapes and some of the forms just to capture what's really important in the pose. After the Proko video is when I started writing down um, three minutes on the bottom. Because like I said, I was doing between three and five minutes. And then after, after watching the video, I realized I really only need three minutes. And all of the photo references were just from um, uh, Line of Action and I think Quick Poses. I think that's the name of the site. But yeah, I completed all of these in just a couple of days. This was all done, it was for sure within a week. I believe it was about three days, maybe four days. I was just sitting on the couch or in the studio, just, uh, you know, banging them out. Just one after the other. It's really fun practice. Uh, if you can stomach sitting there for hours doing this, uh, you get really good results really fast. After doing this, like obviously there's always room for improvement. After doing this, I had no fear or no confusion of where to start with quickly throwing a human body down. After a while, it's just, you know, bam, 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 done. And again, these are just a couple of minutes. So you get your pose down, you get your gesture down, and then you have all the time in the world to correct it and make it look good. So really invaluable stuff. I'm glad I did this. Uh, I definitely want to do a lot more of it, and I'm planning on, on doing a lot more of that on this channel. So... Yeah, look forward to that. So after doing that stuff, I decided to do the same thing with uh, faces, portraiture, because uh, I'm really bad at, at faces, as you can see. Uh, these were all five minutes. Uh, I decided to push myself and fill the whole page with one face, which is probably a mistake, because I just don't have the time for it, especially um, prior to this, not having a whole lot of experience with a pencil, because I just really don't draw on pencil very often. But nonetheless, really good exercise. I uh, definitely, definitely, definitely need to return to this and practice it. Uh, after I did these, I actually um, looked at Proko's uh, portrait drawing course. Um, I did not scan those in though, or take pictures of them. I basically just copied, uh, he, has, he has two demos and I just followed along with him. And then I did a self portrait also in pencil. Um, Here's one from Proko's course. Just followed along with him. He had another demo that he does in it, which I think I have further back in here. Here is his, the second demo that Proko does in the course. 
got some proportional issues. And then at the end of all that, this is at the end of the Proco courses and the ones that I showed you on the screen. Here is a pretty bad self-portrait. Has some proportional issues as well. I look very old and like my face is very squished together. I'll have to do another one. <laughs> yeah, definitely something that I need to work on more and I do intend to. Just, uh, you know, one of the many things I gotta get to. It's just an endless list. The list just it grows, it grows, it grows. So after all that traditional work and I had just filled out that big uh, sketch pad that I had, which is the only large sketch pad that I had, I wanted to do some more figure drawing. Uh, I did start doing some on my Wacom, my Cintiq, but the one thing that I do like about the Apple Pencil is you can draw overhand with it pretty well because of the way the tip is. And after doing all the pencil drawing, I was really, really enjoying drawing overhand, especially for figures and stuff. So I started um, doing these uh, figure drawings in Procreate. All these are in Procreate. Uh, these are three minutes. And then I think after the three minutes, I went in and added some quick, uh, some quick shading. But overall, when I look at these, I can see that I made really good progress from the beginning of when I started with the pencil to coming back to Procreate. I think a lot of these read very well. So I'm very pleased with these, uh, it's really fun. I finally found what I like using Procreate for and the iPad for. Uh, drawing is really fun, drawing overhand with it especially. And then here's just another page, same thing, same time limits. You can see I'm getting more comfortable with shading it with the pencil, with the Apple Pencil. But yeah, really fun stuff. Uh, this is stuff that you could do when you're just sitting on the couch watching TV with your family or your, your friends or uh, you got a couple of minutes to kill just Pick up your sketchbook, pick up your iPad, your, your Cintiq, your, your Wacom, uh, the, the napkin next to you. And you could bang out a few uh, figure studies, gesture drawings, like super quick. It's very, very beneficial to you. Um, I definitely felt my skill improving very rapidly when I was doing these. And I'm looking forward to getting back to doing more. So now we're back to just having fun with imagination. Uh, these are all done in Procreate because I'm finding uh, I found my love with Procreate, uh, one of its default pencil brushes. I can't remember the name of it right, right now. It might be uh, Peppermint or something, uh, but it, it feels really good. It feels like using a pencil. So I just started having fun. Uh, this was drawn from imagination. Like I said, it's just uh, based off of one of my monster characters that, I, that I've drawn a few times in the IP that I talked about earlier with, uh, with the painter and the, the uh, religious looking dude. Just really fun stuff. Some more imagination stuff. I was just kind of doodling, seeing what came out. And uh, this person who's holding themselves up on an ottoman, I guess, is what came out. Honestly, everything just kind of starts with the lion and then I kind of just see where it takes me. Same thing can be said for these next two. Exact same thing. I had no idea what I was drawing. Just start with one shape or one circle or one line and seeing where it ends up. Here's a quick sketch of a phoenix that I drew, all the same way, just decided to make it red. I really like drawing in red. I've mentioned before that I don't really draw fan art. I've never really been uh, someone who who likes drawing fan art. Don't get me wrong, it's, it's really fun, but I, I really like just exploring my own stuff more. But uh, Phoenix, to Jean Grey, is someone who I always tend to come back to and draw. I've drawn her many times over the years, and it's been a very long time since I've drawn her, and so I thought I'd do a quick little sketch of her and I, I like it. it came out pretty cool so after doing all the studies and imagination stuff and working more in procreate and really enjoying the the default brush it has uh, i decided i'd do a study so this is just like you know googling human skull probably one of the first hits that comes up and uh, i just did a quick study of it uh, came out pretty cool probably like i don't know half hour so after all the procreate studying and imagination work that i've done in it uh, really enjoying the pencil brush that it has. Uh, I decided to do one more portrait, but digitally this time and entirely in Procreate. I got the image from Earth's World, uh, which is a really good Instagram account. I think there's also a website uh, has some really good images for people. If you want to draw some different looking people instead of your standard uh, Googled and Instagram models that, that you always see. Overall, I like how this one came out. Uh, probably shouldn't have used red, but I, I like how it looks, but I know that it probably would benefit from, from just being like a, a black or a gray. But nonetheless, uh, I like how it looks. 
uh, some issues like always I, I get proportional issues wrong with with the face I need to spend more time laying everything in but I just get I don't know I don't even think it's impatience I just I don't scrutinize the sketch enough I don't know I'll, I'll get better at it and now finally we're towards the end of the year it's now uh, October I think and uh, I decided to take a plunge and do something that I've been meaning to try for a very long time. Monster Clay was very cheap, it was on sale. So I got a tub of it and I started playing around with it, really enjoyed it. And I don't know why, but I thought uh, maybe I can do a maybe I can do a full character. Let's try it. Let's try um, something from Bloodborne. I love Bloodborne. Uh, let's let's try it out. And you know, this was the result. This was the first video that I made here on YouTube. Um, I am not a sculptor. I've said that many, many times. This is this is legit like the first time I had sculpted in clay. Still really am blown away by the results. Um, needs a lot of work, but at the same time, I mean, uh, I never thought that I'd be able to make something like that. So really cool stuff. Um, yeah, it was kind of the start of, of the next several months of my life. This is the drawing that led into the sculpture. A really bad picture of it. My scanner's dead and I'm in such a flurry, such a rush to get the videos done that by the time I got to taking the picture, I just snapped it really quick and could definitely take a better picture. I, I got to update this and the other pictures of the art. Then we get to my second video, which was Tracer, another one that I pushed myself even further from the last one because I was so pleased with the results and feeling so high on that. Oh, I can probably do even better. So I chose something that was even more difficult. Female is even harder because uh, you got to get everything looking even more proper. With the guy, especially something like Bloodborne, there's room for error and it'll still look good. But with someone like Tracer, it's much harder to pull off. Uh, and again, my, my issue with faces definitely shows up here and in all of my sculptures. Uh, but I really like how Tracer came out. I actually don't play Overwatch, like at all. <laughs> The style is, is, isn't even really for me, if I'm being completely honest. But Tracer, I think, has the best design in the game, so that's why I chose her. I've always, I've always liked Tracer's design, and I think, I think the Overwatch 2 Tracer design is very good. So I did this drawing to familiarize myself with the style before moving forward. Got some funkiness here and there, but uh, this was all done in Procreate as well, just really quick. Just getting ready to go into the, uh, the pencil drawing and the sculpture. Overall, I really liked that video. That was a major milestone in stepping everything up from production to how much I was going to push myself moving forward. And I think it really set the standard that I would be holding myself to uh, moving forward. So then we get to Black Adam. Uh, the movie was about to be coming out and I kind of like his design. Black Adam's always been a pretty cool character in the comics and I figured I might as well try to try to get him done. And I really pushed myself on this one even further, uh, which has been the growing trend with all of the sculptures. I just constantly push myself harder and harder on them, both because I'm making the videos and also it felt really good to be doing something that I perceived myself as more feeling more natural at. Because like with drawing and everything, it took a long time to get anywhere with. Uh, but with the sculpting, it, it seemed to come so natural while I was working on it. Granted, a lot of that's because I've been drawing so long and that's not lost on me, but it was still like a, a surge of, of endorphins uh, producing stuff like this. Because I, again, I never thought that I'd be able to make stuff like this. So it's, it's really cool. It's, it's really cool. But I have to admit, I put a lot of time into these. Like this one was the first one that I, I think I stood up like a full 16 hours one night get it, getting it done. Uh, it was a lot of work. And it's not like I'm beholden to a schedule or anything. I don't have to hit like a YouTube schedule or or uh, a client deadline or anything like that. It's just an internal deadline that I set for myself. Because um, it's not like I'm a big YouTube channel or anything like that. I'm not delusional, but but still like you, you set yourself you set yourself these goals and you you know, you just make damn sure they get done, right? It's kind of the price you pay sometimes for art, huh? And here was the poorly photographed uh, pencil drawing of it. 
This was my 100 sub celebration uh, quick little sketch video that I did, which again, thank you all so much. I think we're over 200 now. Thank all of you. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, had to do Solaire. Dark Souls is one of my favorite games. Solaire is probably one of the most iconic figures in gaming now. Everyone knows Praise the Sun, so I thought it'd be a fun little cheeky way of uh, saying thanks. Here's Fue Coco, which is a funny name every time I say it. Little spicy apple guy. Uh, Pokemon Violet and Scarlet was about to be coming out, and uh, me and my wife were planning on playing it, so I thought it'd be fun. And not only fun, but a nice break after spending so long doing um, Tracer and Black Adam back to back. I kind of needed a little bit of an easier video to make. And so making a small Pokemon was definitely what I needed. This also marks when I decided to start doing digital uh, paintings for the sketches. Because I had spent so much time the last three weeks making the, the previous three videos that I wasn't really drawing or painting and I was missing it. So I figured if I could just do a quick speed paint, it'll scratch that itch a little bit at least. And that's what started that. Then we're at Kratos, another one that I spent an absurd amount of time on. I spent a lot of time on this guy, a lot of time. Uh, this was a full, this was a full work week kind of video. I went back to all of the stuff that I've been talking about with this one, and I just put more time into it than the previous drawings for these videos. Uh, that I did before. And then Kratos himself was a, quite an undertaking. I didn't even do everything that I wanted to do. I was planning on uh, having the chain suspended around him with the Chaos Blades looking much better than they did. I definitely set myself up with this one. Uh, he was a very detailed character and I chose something super ambitious. Uh, didn't fully deliver, but I really like how he came out. I know like all of my sculptures, he's not perfect and fans who are really uh, strict on how their characters look are gonna have issue. But nonetheless, I really like how it came out. The detail that I was able to achieve in his armor and everything is really up there. And overall, I'm very proud of the sculpture. So again, coming off of such a really brutal and time consuming sculpture and video, uh, I had to take I had to take something of a break, so I decided to make Quaxley. My wife wanted me to make Quaxley anyways, because this was her starter in Pokemon. So it was an easy win, a uh, really easy one. Uh, not really much to say about it, just a uh, water duck. Probably probably will never get around to doing the third starter, Sprigatito. These videos didn't do too well. <laughs> Plus, Sprigatito just looks like a green cat. Doesn't even look like a Pokemon. So I'm okay with skipping that one. So this one was really fun. Black Panther was just about to come out. It was right around the corner. And I started working on uh, 3D modeling her in um, ZBrush, uh, something that I didn't really know how to use prior to, to uh, modeling this. This was a bit of a challenge type video. I basically learned how to use ZBrush in about a day, finished the sculpture within 24 hours. Uh, and then I 3D printed it and I painted it. Really fun stuff. For the painting, I just painted over a render of her. This is also the first uh, video and project that I made in my uh, newly designed studio. So it was a really fun, really fun project. I look forward to doing more 3D models that I print and paint because the, the workflow, the pipeline is really enjoyable. I really enjoy 3D modeling. Uh, I would like to get better at it, but it's just another one of those things that's so time consuming. And I have so many other things that I'd probably like to do first that it's hard to make time for it, but it is definitely on the to-do list. Then we get to Batman. This one was really hard to complete for a number of reasons. Uh, I, I got sick like the day that I started making this one and I thought that it was probably just a sore throat and it turned out to be more. And I tried working through uh, feeling like crap basically for the first like three or four days of working on this sculpture, which really isn't that complicated of a sculpture but i was wasn't feeling good i was trying to to keep to the posting schedule and plus kevin conroy had passed and i really wanted to do some sort of tribute to him because uh, his portrayal of batman has always meant a lot to me uh, the character batman means about as much to me as a fictional character can mean to somebody um and you know i'm gonna miss him and 
I really wanted to do something. Being sick, trying to hit the damn arbitrary post schedule that I set for myself, uh, it, it just, it compounded. This one was a struggle to get through. Uh, can't lie. I'm not even really fully satisfied with it, if I'm being honest. I would like to return to it and do the justice that uh, that it deserves. Um, yeah, the, the painting came out pretty cool. I like the painting. But uh, overall, it was just a hard one to... It was a hard one to get through. And yeah, gonna miss you, Kevin. Rest in peace. And then finally, we get to the end of the year uh, when I decided to take a bit of a break because of the Batman one really draining me, being sick for half the damn month. Uh, I really just wanted to take a break. Plus, my wife had the week off from for the holidays, and I didn't want to spend a whole 40 hours getting the next video ready. But I did start playing um, Final Fantasy XI. It was a... I talk about this at length in my previous video if you're interested. And you can also see all of these uh, drawings uh, time-lapsed individually. So if you like any of them, be sure to check out that video if you haven't. Um, but basically I was playing Final Fantasy XI on an old school server that just launched Horizon XI. And uh, the game is so slow. If you've, ever, if you've ever played any of those older MMOs, they're really slow paced. You have a lot of downtime. And so during my downtime, I was just sketching on my iPad, just chilling. Um, basically just sketching my adventures. There's not really a lot to say about them by themselves. They're literally just what I was doing in the game. Um, getting some drawing practice in as well on my iPad, Procreate. Then I thought after sharing them with the community, it would be a fun little uh, exercise to make a uh, painting. So I did a holiday theme painting because it was Christmas, obviously. And there's also a Christmas event that goes on in the game where you can get all this gear and Santa stuff. So it was just really fun. Just total fun. No, um, no stress, no negative thoughts. I, again, I talk about this at length in my previous video if you're interested, and it was just a lot of fun to make. I'm not even that big on Christmas and all these aesthetics, but this was a fun painting to do, and I'm glad I did it. So I'm sure that turned into a much longer video than I intended it to, but that's what happens when you let an artist ramble on about their work, I suppose. Overall, I'm very proud of everything that I accomplished in 2022. I'm very happy that I finally got a website going, got the YouTube thing up and running, um, finally exploring what it means to be an artist more and have fun with that. Uh, overall, just almost everything that I could have asked for out of it. Am I a little disappointed that I didn't get even more personal work done? Well, yeah, of course. I probably could have done more, but there's no reason to dwell. Dwelling is a waste of energy. Uh, all we can do is look forward and make the most of the time that's coming up because we can't control the past but we could control tomorrow so keep that in mind if like me you got stuff done but you still are holding yourself to some stupid impossible standard i'm glad i got to share all of my work with everyone i hope you enjoyed it it'll be very interesting to compare this year's video to next year's uh which hopefully has a mountain of difference especially an improvement i'm gonna make sure it does actually I'm looking forward to all the projects and videos that I have in the pipeline right now. I'm working on quite a few, uh, including a couple of big ones that I'm hoping I can see to completion to share with everyone. A lot of it revolves around art, illustration, painting, uh, mostly 2D art. Uh, the sculpting isn't gonna go anywhere. I'm still gonna sculpt. I very much enjoy doing it. But this year, I really wanna buckle down and get back to improving my drawing, and my painting skills because that is where my passion truly lies and that is truly what I want to do for a living and the rest of my life. So uh, you can expect to see a lot more of that and if you're here for the sculpting it's not going anywhere just probably won't be doing it as often. Anyways if you stuck around through all this and you're still watching then you're truly one of the super fans that I definitely appreciate. Uh, be sure to check out AscentedToMadness.com. All of my links are there, social uh, I got a Discord that's still really empty if you want to join that and hang out. Uh, I have a Patreon that you can access from there as well. In the Patreon, you get access to high resolution images of the work that I complete here on this channel, as well as uncut time lapses of the uh, artwork that I make. And I will be increasing those rewards pretty soon here. I've just been, again, trying to, trying to figure out what this channel even actually is and what it is I'm going to be producing but I think I have a much clearer picture of that 
uh, moving forward this year. So that'll all be stuff to look forward to and to keep an eye on. And finally, we're at the end. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you guys had a great start to the year. Happy New Year's again. Sorry I'm so late, uh, but I'm back. So I'll see you all next week.